Hello, everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to look at the confidence interval and the hypothesis testing. So we're going to go through uh, these two concepts through this exercise. So the first concept is confidence interval. A machine is set up such that the average height of a cylinder build equals mu. That means you have a, a AM machine or the a cutting machine, you're trying to build a cylinder and you want the height equals mu, okay? So a sample of 100 cylinders yields an average height of 48 millimeters. Okay, this is a sample mean. And we have population mean, that is mu. Now calculate the 90, 90% and the 95% confidence interval for the average height. Assume the population stand deviation sigma equals to five millimeter. Now we know the sample mean. So this is the sample mean, x bar. And we want, we know the population. So here, this one is a population stand deviation. And the, the, this exercise, this problem asks us to calculate the 90 and 95% confidence interval for the average height. So here, this is a confidence interval de uh, definition. But how did we get this confidence interval? That is because previously we talked about the x. If x is normally distributed with mu and sigma square, this is population mean and the population uh, variance. Now, what is the distribution of X bar? That is sigma square over N. So from here, from X to X bar, this is a central limit theory, okay? Now, we know if we can normalize the X bar, then this will equals to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root n. Now, we know that the 90% or 95% confidence interval, this is minus c alpha over two, less than z, or less than z alpha over two. This will equals to one minus alpha, okay? So in other words, if we draw the normal distribution, so you will have minus z alpha over two and z alpha over two. You have zero in the middle, z alpha over two here. So what is the area in the middle? that is one minus alpha. And then you have alpha over two for this shaded, uh, shaded area. This is alpha over two. So in total, total probability rule, this is one. Now, if we wanna have the 100, one minus alpha percent confidence interval, then we will have to place this X bar minus mu over sigma over square root of n less than z alpha over two greater than minus z alpha over two. So if we rearrange, in order to get the uh, lower bound and upper bound confidence interval for mu, because we know sample mu, we want to get a confidence interval for our population mu. So we rearrange, this will equals to less than x bar plus z alpha over two sigma over square root of n and then greater than x bar minus z alpha over two sigma over square root of n. Okay, this is how we get the confidence interval. Now, in this problem, we know x bar. When we were given the population mean, a population standard deviation, sigma, and we know z alpha over two, and we know our sample size. So z alpha over two 
this is for the standard normal distribution. If we were given this is 90% and z alpha over two, you see here, z alpha over two, this will be 1.65. That means if you have 90% in the middle, then here is 1.645. Here is 1.645. Then you will have 5% over here and 5% over here. So now for the 90% confidence interval, we are going to put z uh, alpha over 2 right here. So this is plus minus 1.645. And then the sigma standard deviation is 5. It's right here. So it's 5. And we have 100 cylinders. And we know the sample mean. So this will be our 90% confidence interval. And this will be our 95% confidence interval. Now, this is how we get the confidence interval for the population mean based on the sample data we have. Now let's have a look at the sample size. So the question is, obviously, this actually depending on the sample size, because if you increase 100 to 200, then this interval will be different. Now the question is, what sample size is required to make sure the margin of error is within 0.5 millimeters. Now this is five millimeter. Now we want to go into the 0.5 millimeters at 95% confidence interval. Okay. Margin of error. So the margin of error assume the population standard deviation is five millimeters. That means the margin of error equals to z alpha over two. This is my margin of error. Because you have x bar plus minus this margin of error, you got as a confidence interval. The sigma over square root of n. You want this one to equal to 0.5 millimeter. And we want to solve for the sample size. Sample size. We know the population standard deviation. We know z alpha over two because z alpha over two for 95% is 1.96 times five millimeter divided by square root of n. This should equals to 0.5. Okay, then n equals to 1.96 times 5 and then uh, then divide by 0.5 then take the square this will equals to 368.64 now approximately this because we cannot take the decimal points when we make a part, right? So this will be 369, okay? So you run, always round up because n is here. If you increase n, if you increase n, if you increase n, this will get smaller. That means margin of error will get smaller. That means the more data you have, the more accurate or the, mar or the smaller margin of error you will have. So that's why people always uh, want more data when they are trying to solve the problem. Okay, so far we finished the confidence interval uh, discussion and also how sample size impact the margin of error. Now let's do a hypothesis testing. We are still going to test on the mean, assume the population standard deviation is known, or population variance is known. So a machine is set up such that the average height of a cylinder build equals mu. A sample of 36 cylinders yields an average height of 51.5 millimeter. Now, this is a different problem. Test the hypothesis that the average height per cylinder is 50 meters, uh, 50 millimeters at the 5% significant level. Now, 
the approach, we have classical approach, we compare with critical values. Now the steps. The first step, formulate. Now hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So now hypothesis is mu equals to 50 millimeter. And the alternative hypothesis is mu doesn't equals to 50 millimeter. So because the problem, the, the, the question is test the hypothesis that the average height per cylinder is 50 millimeter at the 5%. So is or is not. And then we're going to calculate the test statistic Z0. So Z0 will equals to X bar minus mu zero divided by sigma over square root n. So this is our mu zero, mu zero, because mu zero is the hypothesis you want to test. You want to test whether your population mean equals to mu zero or not. So X bar minus 50 divided by five over square root of 36. So this will equals to 1.8. Now, third step. For two-sided test, reject H not if Z zero greater than Z alpha over two or Z zero less than minus Z alpha over two. And we know the 5% significant level. So we have uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.025. So this is 95% confidence interval, 95%. Uh, so Z alpha over two will equals to 5% uh, significant level. So Z uh, 0 0.05 divided by two, this is Z 0.025. This equals to 1.96. We know that 1.8 is less than 1.96 or greater than minus 1.96. So you see here, the calculated Z0 is less than Z alpha over 2 and a greater than minus z alpha over two. So it's within the acceptance region. Acceptance region. Therefore, now hypothesis cannot be rejected. Okay, so this is a classical approach. We compare the test statistics against the, the critical values. Now let's have a look at a p-value, p-value approach. Okay, in p-value approach, we want to, uh, first step, it's the same, first step formulate now hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Now hypothesis mu equals to 50. And alternative hypothesis mu doesn't equals to 50. Now second step, compute the calculate the test statistic Z0 
z0. And this is still the same, z0 equals to x bar minus mu0 over sigma over square root n. And this equals to 1.8, the same. But the third step is different. The third step is to compute the p-value. We're not going to use this test statistic and uh, compare it with versus the uh, critical values, but now we're going to compute the p-value. And we're going to use the p-value to compare the p-value with the significant level. Okay, and the p-value is p-value equals to two times one minus phi z zero. So this will equals to two times one minus point nine six four one. So this will equals to two times point oh three five nine equals to point oh seven one eight. Now last step the p value greater than point oh five. Therefore now H naught cannot be rejected. So the main difference is the classical approach, this is a classical approach. In classical approach, we compare the test statistic, Z0, with, uh, uh, with critical values. And here we we use the Z0 to compute the p-value, and then we use p-value to compare with the significant level, okay? So now, if, we, if I draw the figure, you see here, previously, in the classical approach, you know this is a, a standard normal distribution. Now you're trying to find uh, Z alpha over two. Right, this is z alpha over two, and this is minus z alpha over two, and this is my acceptance region, and these two sides are rejection region. Reject, reject, and this is acceptance region. Now, you want to find where is your z zero. For example, z zero is right here or z0 right here. So depending on where you test the statistics is located, then you will be able to say, oh, if it is in the acceptance region, then I'm saying x bar is not very far away from my mu, population mean. So mu is actually equals to 50. But if you accept this hypothesis, if z0 is here, that means here you see my x bar and mu zero, they are very far away from each other. Then I have to reject it. So this is a, a idea. However, in p-value approach, in p-value approach, you see here, p-value approach, you also have a distribution. Now I, I tell you the alpha is uh, 5%. You should have only 5% left. Now, I don't try to locate where Z alpha is. I'm just finding the Z zero. If I find Z zero, then I also know where minus zero Z zero is, okay? Then I'm trying to find out, okay, how many areas left, okay? The p-value is actually equals to the summation of these two areas if it is two-sided test, okay? So the p-value will equals to two times one minus phi z zero for two-sided test. Two-sided test means 
you have h naught mu equals to mu zero and h one mu doesn't equals to mu zero. And you will have only one minus phi z zero if it is for the upper tailed or right tailed test. That means you will have h1 that is mu greater than mu zero. And h0 is, is still mu equals to mu zero. That means you're trying to test against whether it's greater than. And also phi z0 is left tailed test. That is h0, h0 is mu equals to mu zero and h1 mu less than mu zero. And what is phi z0? Phi z0 is actually this area. So you have z0 right here. And phi is a cumulative distribution. It's, it's all the way from minus infinity up to this point. So this area is my phi z0. Then this area will be my one minus phi z0. So if, that's why if you want to add these two areas together, you need to multiply one minus phi z0 twice. However, if you only consider this side, then this is one minus phi z0. Okay, if you z0 is right here because this, this is a left tail test. For left tail test, most of the time, you will have z0 right here. So you only consider one side. So you just want to calculate this area as your p-value. So that's why the difference, how to calculate the p-value. And then you compare, because this one we are using z0 compared with critical values. But here, now if you know where z0 is, you will be able to know this area. And then you will be able to compare with the significant level alpha and add these two together, it's greater than alpha or smaller than alpha. And uh, please note, the p-value for p-value approach, the smaller the p-value is, the stronger evidence to reject the uh, null hypothesis. The smaller the p-value is, the stronger evidence against now hypothesis h0. This is very important, okay? So if you have a small p-value, that means z0 is pretty big, right? You're pushing this to this side. If z0 is very far away and very far away, and then these two areas are smaller, that means your p-value is smaller that means the zero, the zero is pretty big and the uh, zero is pretty big, then you are in the rejection region. That means stronger evidence against the null hypothesis. Okay, hopefully this part is very clear to you guys. If you guys have any questions or confusions, can you, you can wind it back and uh, look at my explanations about the p-value. Especially if you understand this, this few figures, you will be able to uh, have a better understanding how p-value works. Now let's have a look at the impact of the sample size. Okay. So now we're going to use, uh, because we have already uh, talked about the p-value and the classical approach, now I'm going to talk about the p-value approach only, uh, or the classical approach. And we can do it in either way. So a machine is set up equals mu. Now we are gonna connect 100 cylinders. And then the height is different, the sample mean, okay? Now test the hypothesis, the, now we test the same hypothesis again at the same significant level. And then we're gonna compare the conclusion to that based on the 36. Obviously we need to formulate now hypothesis, first step, that is mu equals to 50 and h1 mu doesn't equals to 50. And then we're gonna get the test statistic.
that is z0 equals to x bar minus mu zero divided by sigma over square root of n. And this will equals to 51.2 minus 50 divided by uh, five over 100. Now we're gonna divide by 100. You can see previously we divided by only 36. Now this will equals to 2.4. So for the two-sided test, we know that we are going to compare with the uh, compare with the critical values, and then we are going to reject H not if z zero greater than z alpha over two, or z zero less than minus z alpha over two. Obviously, 2.4 is greater than 1.96, so we reject H0. So if we use the uh, p-value approach, so we know that a p-value equals to 1 minus phi z0, but you need to times 2, right? So this will equals to uh, 1 minus 0.9918 and then times 2, this will equals to 0 0.0164. And this is greater than point. Uh, oh, this is not greater. This is less than 0 0.05. Less than 5% significant level. So the smaller the p value is, the stronger evidence reject H0. Now we get it done. So you see, uh, even the same, uh, even if we have a different, uh, uh, we have a different, different sample size, and you can make a different, uh, uh, different conclusion, because now you have more data points, and then you have more information about what should be done, and also make a better decision. Now let's have a look at the right tail test. So. What's the difference between a uh, right tail test? Previously, we, we always assume mu equals to 50 or not, but now you see here, mu exceed 40 or not, right? Whether it exceed, exceed that is right tail test. So now let's uh, formulate the hypothesis. Formulate. H0 and H0 and H1 mu equals to, now we are gonna test against the 40. Now equals to 40, or mu greater than 40. Now the second step, compute the test statistic. And then this z0 will equals to x bar minus mu zero divided by sigma over square root of n. This will equals to 40.5 minus 40 divided by, uh, what is the population standard deviation? 1.25 over square root of uh, uh, 10. And this equals to 1.25. 2649. This is my test statistic. And uh, we are going to, because this is uh, for the right tailed test, we are going to reject H naught if z0 greater than z alpha. You see, now it's z alpha because if we have 5% significant level, we only test against one side. We don't split alpha to two sides anymore. So z alpha equals to z.05, which equals to 1.65.
and 1.2649 is less than 1.65. So that's why H0 cannot be rejected. That means we don't have enough evidence to support that mu greater than 40 millimeter. If we do the, uh, we can do the p-value approach here, the third step, the p-value equals to one minus phi z zero, right? Z zero, because only one sided. So this will equals to one minus 0 0.8962. So this equals to point, uh, 0 0.1038. So this is greater than 0 0.05. So we cannot reject H0. And there's no, not enough evidence to support that mu greater than 40. You cannot reject H0 because H0 is mu equals to 40. Am I making sense? So this is a uh, the p-value approach. Now let's have a look at the last uh, uh, question. It's about the lab tail test. Now the manager claims that it is less than 50 millimeter. The machine operator disagrees. And then a sample of 100 yields a average height of 49. Does this sample allow the manager to claim his right? Okay. So in this case, that's first step, formulate hypothesis. Mu equals to 50, H1 mu less than 50 because the manager claims that it's less than. Now, second step, we're going to compute the test statistic. You may have noticed so far, no matter its p-value or classical approach, and you, the second step, always you need to calculate the test statistic. Z0, Z0 equals to x bar minus mu zero divided by sigma over square root n. So this will be 49 minus 50, okay? Because you test against the 40, 50 millimeter. And then this is uh, five over square root of 100. So Z0 equals to minus two. Now the third step for the two-sided test, Oh, this is not two sides, this is for the left tail test. Reject H0 if Z0 less than minus Z alpha. You see alpha doesn't split because this is only one side. And Z alpha equals to Z.05 equals to 1.65. And a minus two is less than minus 1.65. So H naught, the null hypothesis is, is rejected. And then the alternative hypothesis, that means the manager is right. And we can do this in the, uh, the p-value approach as well. Let's do it in the p-value approach for the left tailed test p-value equals to phi z0 then equals to phi minus two then equals to point o two two seven five so this is less than 0 0.05 okay now we compare p-value with the significant level 
Here, we compare Z0 with the critical values. So it's a different approach, but in the underlying theory, pretty much they are, the, they are, they are very similar to each other. So same H0 is rejected. Again, through this exercise, I hope you guys understand the difference between classical approach and a p-value approach, and also the similarity between them. The key is actually in the figure that we discussed right here. If you understand the figure, you compare this one, you compare with the test statistic with the critical values. This one, you compare the p-value with the significant level alpha. So this is the uh, uh, end of this exercise. Uh, again, for p-value approach, the smaller the p-value is, the stronger the evidence, uh, the stronger evidence against null hypothesis. That means if your p-value is very small, then your null hypothesis, you can, you are, you are going to reject your null hypothesis. Okay, uh, hope, hope it makes a lot of sense in this exercise. And if you have any questions, just rewind and try to uh, clarify some of the uh, segments of the concepts. If you have, have any further questions, you can uh, shoot me an email uh, through the canvas, please.